Hey everyone, welcome to Susan's Sunday Spotlight number three. Today's going to kind of be a twofer. I'm gonna give you two games for one because they're both very similar. One I use for literacy and one I use for math and they're both circle games. So that means that the students are gonna be sitting in a circle and I usually do this whole group and I usually play these games during morning meeting or when I have a little extra time to kill and kind of calm students down. Another time I loved it is when students would come in from outdoor recess, they'd come sit on a circle and we'd play one of these games to try to calm down and get ready to learn again. So, I'm excited, let's learn how to play. The two games we're gonna to learn today are called Buzz and Sparkle. I wrote a little bit on the board behind me back there, um, but neither of the games really require any sort of whiteboard or anything else. All you need to do is be the leader for it. So the first game is called Buzz, and Buzz is a counting game, and all students need to do is they sit in a circle, and you'll have one student start, and they just start counting. One student says one, the next says two, three, four, and so on. And what you'll do is, students want to omit a number um, based on kind of what you're learning and when I start at the beginning of the year in first grade we always start with multiples of 10. So this, I, this is why I do have it written on the board. It got super bright. Let me see if I can focus it over there. Okay. So student one would say one, then the next student would say two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that 10th student is challenged to then not say 10. They're challenged to try to say buzz and omit that number. And when they say buzz, the next student then sits down. Does that make sense? So they'll sit down and then the next student will say 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, buzz, 21, 22, 23. So it takes a little practice. But um, students tend to love this game, and if you start with a different student every time or students are sitting in different areas, you kind of have a winner at the end of each game, and it's just the last person standing. So there's two ways you can get out of this game. The first way is, again, after somebody says buzz, the next student's turn, they have to sit down. The other way you get out is if you don't say the correct number. So it gets tricky after the words buzz because you're like, oh, buzz stood for 10, so what comes next? 11. Um, it's a lot of cognitive thinking that they're doing as they're counting. So with those two ways to get out, if you keep going around, and it really doesn't take that long, you continue going around the class, um, there'll be one student left standing. So usually that student is the winner and we kind of celebrate. We understand that it's not really like a winner of, you know, anything big, but they usually get like a sticker or something. And they're excited about a sticker, they're first grader, so whatever works. So as the year progresses, we make this a little harder. And the way we do that is by changing uh, what buzz is going to stand for. So let me zoom you in again. So instead of buzz just being for 10, buzz is now gonna be multiples of five. So they'll say one, two, three, four, buzz, six, seven, eight, nine, buzz, 11, 12, 13, 14, buzz, and so on and so forth. So there's always different ways to make this game more difficult. Like I said, we do it with multiples at 10 first at the beginning of the year, then we do it with multiples of five, um, and then as we practice skip counting, usually in like October, November, I start to amp it up a little bit, and instead of even counting by ones, we're only counting by twos. And with that, we'll still do, um, you know, multiples of 10. So we'll say two, four, six, eight, buzz, 12, 14, 16, 18, buzz, and again, every time after buzz, that next student is sitting down. So you, like I said, you keep going around until there's a winner. Um, also, I will say at the beginning of the year, I usually keep up the 120 chart, especially like pretty much all of September, I have it up there. This is a crutch for my students that are coming in from kindergarten that might not know um, not, not know all their numbers, especially as it starts getting higher. I let them look up there because again, the game buzz, while it is testing their, you know, their counting skills. Um, it's also really testing that buzzword if they can identify those multiples of 10 and we talk about what it looks like on a hundred chart and how all the tens are you know on the end and they're on top of each other like this vertically. So they're also counting and identifying the numbers as they're looking at the 120 chart and then when they see that their next number is 10 they have to remember to say buzz. So it's still tricky whether they're looking at the 120 chart or not. Um, and like I said, depending on the class, I might leave that up a lot longer, but usually towards the middle or end of the year, I start to take that away, so they have to do it from their memory. 
Okay, the second game I want to show you today is called Sparkle. Now it's very similar to the buzz game, but with this it's for um, spelling words or sight words that you want to spell or any kind of maybe tricky pattern that you're working on with your class. And again, it's a circle game. So same concept, I'll explain to you how it goes. So students are sitting in a circle, or standing in a circle, sorry. And you'll go ahead and pick some words. Maybe it's a sight word like the that you want them to practice. First, the students are just going to go around and they're going to start spelling the word that you say. So you are an active participant in this because you need to give them the next words that they need to go ahead and spell. So I might say the. Student one would say T. Student two would say H. Student three would say E. And then once that word is completely spelled, the fourth student or the next student says sparkle. And just like Buzz, when the student says sparkle, the next student then sits down. Just like with Buzz, there are two ways to get out or sit down. The first one is if you incorrectly say a letter. And the second one is if the person before you says sparkle. So I like to play this game the same times when I would play Buzz, basically. I would use it during morning meeting, uh, sometimes when the kids come in from recess, but instead of a math warm-up, I would obviously use this during like a phonics warm-up. Other than using it with like sight words or spelling words for the week, I like to use it with different phonics patterns that we're working on. So if students are working on short A, I might have them spell cat, that, splat. And that actually reminds me that I like this game too because I'm the facilitator. So based on where kids are sitting in the classroom and I know their individual needs, um, I can kind of cater the game to the kids. Um, it's, you know, this game is about building the kids up and it's just a fun little practice game. It's not to make anyone feel any sort of way. So if we're working on short A words and I can see uh, where we're going in the circle, I might use the word splat, you know, with that triple blend at the beginning. After that, I might take a look at the kids and change it to maybe the word cat or the word cab or something like that just so everyone has kind of an equal opportunity to succeed in this game, because again, it's all about luck and where you're sitting. So yeah, that's the game Sparkle. It's just like the game Buzz, which is why I wanted to kind of put them together into one video, because the way you play is exactly the same. Um, I like to make all these games that I'm gonna share with you like fun and simple and easy to use in your classroom. So I hope you can take them and kind of adapt them to fit your needs. Um, if you don't know the drill, this is, like I said, Susan's Sunday Spotlight. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. So yeah, you can find me next Sunday right here and I'll have another new game for you. Make sure you go ahead and click subscribe and hit the bell so that way you are notified every single week of your new video. Thanks, bye. Welcome to Susan's Sunday. Oh, that was not me, that was the chair. I swear. That's a piece of popcorn. I literally didn't even have popcorn. My kids.